everybody. This is Petey from Bergsburg Arcade at BergsburgArcade.net. And here we are back again. Uh, this is this is a little bit late. I, well, the next video I wanted to make for our character controller was about turning. Uh, but I can't really find a turn animation I like just yet. At least not on this short notice. Uh, just didn't get a whole lot of time to get that third uh, video out today. So I've gone ahead and I want to start working with our rigid body. Because I know I'm going to want to have a rigid body and a collider on as well. And there's also one little fix I wanted to make in this video. So let's go ahead. Jump straight into Unity and make sure you got your guy selected. And we just want to select it. We don't want to change his name. Go ahead and watch the forward value. When we hit play and we start running, well, notice it's it's a binary operation. It goes from zero to one instantly. And that's not the behavior we want. We want a, a slow ramp up. And that's because I went ahead and used the raw values for get access. And I mentioned earlier that I usually use get access. And this time around, I was doing the get access raw because Unity does a little bit of uh, smoothing and stuff like that with the values for the get access. And we actually want those little things. Let's go ahead. We'll save that off. We'll come in. And this should make it a little bit clearer when you watch it. So go ahead and make sure you get your beta selected. Watch over here. We'll start it up. And now when we hit play, we see how it slowly ramps up. And when we let go, it slowly ramps down. Let's get the guy a little bit closer. So it has that little in-between phase where he's he can actually walk. And of course, when we hit negative, it does the same, but we're not actually walking backwards. But that's the progression we want. And if you wanted to go around and play with how fast that goes, you can actually do that. I never do, but I'll show you where you can play around with it and read up on it. Uh, we'll come into the input settings. So project, project settings input. And right here, we're doing with the vertical axis right now. And the things you're going to want to look up are the gravity, or the dead zone, and the sensitivity. Are really the only things you want to look at. Basically, how fast does it decline back to zero? How fast does it climb? And at what point do we just register it at zero? Uh, heads up, you'll probably want, first thing you want to think of is, oh, I'll just go ahead and put this at zero. But uh, it's very seldom ever at zero. There's always like a little slight variation. You don't want your character twitching all over the place. So anyway, go ahead. Just take a look at the input system on Unity. They've got a huge section in their documentation about it, but uh, really all you have to play around with is the gravity and sensitivity. But I'm going to leave mine at the default of three. And with that said, let's go ahead and start working with our beta. I want to add a collider and a rigid body, and I'm not going to do it this way. I'm going to actually come into the script and do the exact same thing with this. So we'll require a component. This time around, we're going to go with a rigid body. And make sure it's a rigid body, not a rigid body 2D. And we also want a capsule collider. And I'll come down here and I'm not sure why this says public. I must have been doing some testing on some stuff. Doesn't need to be public. So we'll go ahead. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm actually going to need my rigid body, a reference to it. And the same thing for my capsule collider. Right now, I don't need to actually do anything with them. So I'm just going to save that off. And to be honest, if you didn't even want to add these two lines, you didn't have to. You could just come in here and add them that way uh, through the add component. I'm just going to go ahead hit hit uh, remove component. And we'll go ahead and add it again. And it automatically adds these for me again, which is what I want. Now, of course, if you go ahead, I just want to demonstrate here. If you go ahead and you remove it again, and you go to add it, it doesn't add new ones. It just makes sure that there's at least one. It doesn't actually check to see if you have, you know, like three animators or whatnot. It j it'll just check to make sure that you have one. And if you don't, it will add it. So let's come into the scene. Uh, we're going to have to take a look at our guys. So I'm going to have to rotate the camera a bit. And we're going to be playing around with the capsule collider and the rigid body a bit. So the capsule collider is not exactly centered where I want it. So let's play with that first. So we'll keep the direction of the Y axis, height, uh, I'll put to two. And the center, I'm gonna move it up to one, which will be in the middle. And we'll go ahead and look. Uh, it's a little bit tall, right? So maybe, uh, what do we want? We'll try to shorten it up a bit, 1.8. Now this is actually gonna change according to the model you have. And a rule of thumb is, you know, whatever the height is on the Y, you want it half of that, so 0.9. That's pretty good. It's down at the feet. 
up at the head. Actually, that's really good. I like it. So now we want to go ahead and change the radius here. And as a rule of thumb, when I'm starting out, I generally like it about as wide as the shoulders. And I'm talking about the outer part here. So we can just grab that and just start shrinking it down. So uh, about, about there, maybe a little bit wider than the shoulders what I go for. Uh, there we go. So the hips are included. That's pretty good. We'll go ahead. We'll hit uh, play. And we notice he falls. And that's because he has gravity. And we want gravity. I'm going to go ahead and actually lift him way up in the air. Well, not way up, but up. And we're going to have to go ahead and put a floor under him now because with the rigid body, it's going to constantly pull him down. So I'm just going to go ahead and use a cube. And we'll just change the settings. I'm going to make my cube, I don't know, 0.1 on the Y, 100 on the X, and whoops, 0.1 on the Y, and 100 on the Z. There we go. That's kind of blinding, isn't it? We'll go ahead and add a color to that. So let's come into Assets. Whoops, assets. And I'm gonna make a new folder. I'll call it materials. We'll open that up, we'll go ahead, we'll make a new material. So create material. And I'm just gonna call it matte floor. And I'm just gonna change the color. How about something fairly dark? Let's go with a blue. And I'm just gonna go ahead and take that, drag it onto the floor and drop it. Uh, there we go. And we want to make sure he's above the ground. I actually want him a bit higher than that. So now let's go ahead. We'll hit play and watch him. He falls down. And when we hit walk, he falls over. Well, that's because of the rigid body. We're done with the capsule collider for now. Let's go ahead and shrink that down. And let's take a look at this rigid body. Uh, the reason why I wanted to shrink it down is it actually hides it. One of the cool features in Unity. Uh, if you shrink it down, you no longer see it. It's still there, you just don't see it. So we're gonna come in. Uh, I'm not really gonna play with the mass and everything just yet, or the drag. Uh, what I'm gonna do is the constraints. And I'm gonna freeze the rotation on X, Y, and Z for now. And that'll be enough to stop him from falling over. So now when we walk, well, let's actually follow him. Now when we walk, he'll actually go. And we'll let go. All right. So it might be like, well, why are we bother adding that? Well, later on, we want to be able to have him interact with items. And I'm actually going to head and name this to floor. And we'll make a few new ones here. I'm going to go ahead and create some cubes. And... Put these at what zero and zero. We'll start there. We're gonna make a wall of them. Did I not put my floor at zero? Oh, yeah, there we go. As a general rule, when I'm playing around with stuff, I like to make sure it's all at the origin. Zero zero zero. So I'm gonna come in, grab this cube. I just want to lift it above the ground. Roughly. And I'm going to go ahead and just duplicate it. I'll rotate it around. I'm going to use this V for vertex snapping. Well, actually, before I do that, let's move it over here a bit. I'm going to grab this corner here and snap it together. And we'll go ahead, duplicate again, drag it over, hold down V for vertex snapping. And I'm grabbing this corner, snapping it to that one. So it just looks like one cube. And I'm going to grab all three, duplicate again, drag up, vertex snapping. There we go. So we've got a, a two by three set of boxes. And I'm going to make another material just so they're not white. White's just so boring, isn't it? And well, if anyone's been watching my series for a while, we all know that cubes are red because they're evil. So we'll go ahead. The red is red we can get. And we're going to go, I guess we actually should have did this first. Then we're going to just uh, duplicate it, but that's fine. Now you can also go ahead and just select the cube in the scene and drag it on that way as well. And now let's go ahead. We'll position our camera a little bit different. I want to be able to see this. 
And we'll go ahead and hit play. Our guy will drop to the ground. We can go run it into our boxes. And, and not too climatic, is it? Uh, definitely hit the ride through your bodies. Yeah, I did. Well, it wouldn't be a PD video if I got everything right the first time, right? So I'm going to go ahead, drag all these down here so they're all lined up the same. Since they're all selected, I can add a component. And rigid body is the component we're going to add. Now I'm going to leave their mass at 1. And we'll select us. I'm going to put our mass at 10. And it works just like it does in real world. Something with a bigger mass is going to push stuff with uh, a lower mass around. So you can probably guess what's going to happen, right? We'll go ahead and we'll start this up. And now we can run through stuff. Woo! <laughs> uh, we'll try it one more time. Let's actually follow Beta around. I guess we're going to need a name for our character, maybe. What should we name him? Beta's kind of boring. Let's go. Beta Box Killer. <laughs> so we'll run through. Pretty cool. We'll just keep going. We'll plow through stuff. But there we go. We can now run through things. Hopefully this sparks a few more things going on in your imagination on what we're going to be able to do with this character controller. But I did want to get at least one more video out on it today. Anyway, apologies that this one was a little bit later than the other two, but uh, hopefully you enjoyed it just as much, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. So if you liked the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And go ahead and follow me on Twitter. You're a pretty chatty guy over there. When I'm not walking through a forest. Or being stalked by eagles and falcons. Lions, tigers, and bears.